योगेन चित्तस्य पदेन वाचा मलम शरीर से वैद्यकन योपकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिरान तोस्मे आबाहुपुरुषाकार शंकचक्रासीधारिण सहस्रशिश श्वेत प्रणमा पतंजलि गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेशर गुरसाक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम हरि ओ in the previous session we had looked at the last sutra that we looked at was 4.6 which was tatra dhyanajam anashayam so among the siddhis arising from the different means of janma oshadi mantra tapa and samadhi the one pertaining to samadhi which is in the path of yoga which is dhyana ja born out of dhyana is the one that is anashayam which means it is bereft of the karma ashaya it is bereft of klesha karma vasana so that is what the previous sutra had said and we had looked at the bhashya so that continues in the upcoming sutra 4.7 the vyasa says yataha which means why is that why is it that tatra dhyanajam anashayam that is because then comes the sutra 4.7 it is because karma shukla krishnam yoginas trividam itaresham so we will look at it in detail but karma ashukla akrishnam yoginah so the yog the karma of yogi is characterized as ashukla akrishna we will see that what that is shukla means white bright etc krishna means black dark etc so for the yogi it is ashukla akrishna neither white and bright nor dark and black with regards to the yogi the karma of the yogi then the sutra says trividham itaresham as with regards to everybody else it is of three types it is of three categories so this is a very remarkable sutra very insightful and yet very terse and brief where it distinctly characterizes the karma of the yogi as opposed to karma of everybody else and further categorizes the karma of everybody else as well so all kinds of karmas are classified into four categories and among that the one of the yogi is said to be akshukla akrishna so to understand it better we have to understand what is shukla karma what is krishna karma and what is the third category and then what is the yogi's fourth category and that is the description that vyasa will give in his bhashya which we will look at next so vyasa begins he says chatushpadi khaluyam karma jatihi so the karma jati the category of karmas so this whole karma jati is chatushpadi it is of four kinds and he says it very nicely it is khaluyam so this karma jati he says is indeed of four kinds so what are the four kinds krishna krishna is a feminine form because jati is a feminine form from a grammar point of view so karma jati he is a word that is in the stri lingam which is the feminine form so therefore all the qualifiers the adjectives will take a corresponding form so then the first karma jati is krishna the second karma jati says vyasa is shukla krishna the third karma jati is shukla shuk 
is a shukla so the third karma jati is shukla so the first one is krishna second is shukla krishna third is shukla and the fourth is a shukla krishna which means a shukla and a krishna cheti so vyasa begins by first enumerating the four legs so to speak the chatushpadi is also as though it is standing on four legs or containing four types so this karma jati the four types is krishna shukla krishna shukla and ashukla krishna so then what is what are these four this is this tatra krishna duratmanam so whatever is referred to as krishna dark black is the first the karma by those who are dushta who are so to speak bad bad means not in alignment with the shastras not in alignment with dharma not in alignment with what is referred to as shishta acharaha not in alignment with good conduct good thoughts good point of view so the bad people so to speak the karma coming from them is krishna the karma jati is krishna it is referred to as dark or black or krishna second one shukla krishna so shukla krishna it has aspects of shukla shukla means white and bright krishna means dark and black so it is a mix so it has both white and black aspects so sorry white and bright aspects as well as dark and black aspects so shukla krishna bahisadana sadhya so what is shukla krishna it is now this is also a very insight, insightful thing because it says any karma whose sadhanam sadhanam means the means for achieving that karma or performing that karma is bahihi is outside one self whatever is within one self is known as adhyatmam atmani sthitam iti adhyatmam whatever is outside when the means are outside it is bahis sadhana sadhya so it can be attained sadhya by bahis sadhana means the sadhanam that is outside the means that are external to oneself so shukla krishna bahis sadhana sadhya now why does it make it shukla krishna because tatra parapidanugrah dware naiva karmasya pratayah because anything that has external means involves parapida and para anugrah so parapida means some trouble some torment to somebody para means to the other so somebody else has had some cause for grief some cause for complaint and that is said to be inevitable whenever the means is external to oneself maybe for the means there is a specific puja you had to get something so you had to something was bought a flower was plucked so some torment something inevitably happens so that is a parapida because for that money had to be accumulated as part of the accumulation of the money which resulted in the puja maybe the, there is the whole process of accumulating money involves somebody being offended somebody feeling that they were not treated fairly or whatever so parapida is said to be inevitable similarly anugraha anugraha means somebody else there was a benedictory action so they were please there is a benediction there is something good done to the other so these are the gates so parapida anugraha dwarena dwar means gate so through these gates there is a karma asaya pratyaya so either of these both of these inevitably leads to the increase in the karma asaya why because parapida leads to papa it's a papa karma so there is a karma asaya there is a samskara which will then fructify into something which is not pleasant which is not good because the karma involved parapida and papa so it is a unfavorable fruition which will happen on the other hand anugraha 
will is a meritorious action something good was done to someone that will also result in fruition which will be a favorable pleasant good fruition but anything that results in the fruition is something that has been part of the karma ashaya so in either case the karma ashaya pratyaya is bound to happen so shukla krishna karma is that which will lead to an increase in the karma ashaya now there is a certain proportion one might say that okay for some people there is more shukla less krishna so there there are more of the more meritorious deeds so then okay the fruition might be exalted maybe they get a lot of uh, good things here on the earth or in the next birth they go they can go to swarga loka all of these things can happen on the other hand if there, there, there is a preponderance of the krishna jati then there is a non meritorious action going to lead to suffering etc but in either case all of this resulted in an increase in karma ashaya so this is a shukla krishna category which applies to most people in different gradations krishna is purely non meritorious this is extremely villainous applies to smaller set of people but it can be very bad second we just saw was shukla krishna but the key point the interesting point is not about whether it is good whether it is bad how it was done etc the key insight there is they are all bahis sadhana sadhya so anything which is by its very nature so sometimes we say okay i am doing very good because i am doing work i am helping people and so on but if it is bahis sadhana sadhya the yogi realizes that invariably there is a karma ashaya prasaya happening as part of that okay then there is a third shukla so the third type of karma jati the third part of the karma jati is shukla shukla refers to bright lustrous white etc so shukla is tapasvadhyaya dhyanavatam so it is for those people who are so this is known as the matap pratyay dhyanavatam so matap pratyay means uh, tasya asti tasmin nasti iti so which means one who has it one who has what tapasvadhyaya and dhyana so those who have that or those who do that so tapasvadhyaya dhyanavan is one who has the tapasvadhyaya and dhyana as part of his action that is his primary way of his karma jati or tapasvadhyaya dhyanavati it is that lady who has tapasvadhyaya and dhyana so of all those people tapasvadhyaya dhyanavatam shukla the karma jati is bright white lustrous etc it said to be shukla sahi kevale manasi ayatatvat bahis sadhana dhina na paran pidayitva bhavati so because by its very nature the sap tapa swadhyaya and dhyana is kevale so purely only manasi in the mind ayatatvat because the action the substrate of the action is purely in the mind purely in one's chitta tapa swadhyaya and dhyana is something that is purely within oneself and bhai sadhana dina na so it is not something that is depending on external means so it doesn't happen through parapida so because there is no parapida there is no tormenting of the other there is no krishna aspect to it so it is purely shukla that was opposed to the shukla krishna that was in the previous one because it depended on external means here there are no external means involved therefore it says there is no parapida involved as far as these karmas are concerned because it is done purely in the mind therefore it is purely shukla so this is a third category then the fourth one ashukla krishna sanyasinam khina klesha na 
சரமதேகானாம் இது சோ த அசுக்ல அக்ரிஷ்ண which is the one referred to in the sutra is about whom about the those that have kshina klesha so their karma shay the kleshas avidya etc already has been faded and gone away so these are the charama dehis there this is the last embodiment because after this they are going to get kaivalya or moksha this is the topmost yogis they are sanyasi samyak rupena nyasyati karma phalam it is said so sanyasi here doesn't refer to those going around with the saffron robe etc here sanyasi means they have given up as said in the gita etc the doership and the phalam etc they they have renounced it as not belonging to themselves in a, from a ishwara pranayana point of view offered to the ishwara and then the kleshas are completely kshina they are faded and gone away so this is the highly cultivated highly refined yogi so these are not people on the path of yoga this is not a yoga abhyasi that is being referred to here the top most strong of the yogi they for them it is ashakla krishna completely of sanyasinam kshina kleshanam charamadehanam iti so now the explanation how come tatra how come ashukla that, that is a natural question because the shukla was said to be coming from tapasva dhyaya dhyana etc now these yogis the kshina kleshas who are sanyasta karma phalam charamadehi etc they are also engaged in tapasva dhyaya dhyana etc so how come ashukla so vyasa answers that by saying tatra ashuklam yogina eva phala sanyasat so why is it ashuklam because even though the karma qualifies for shukla because it is also an adhyatmik karma of the nature of tapasva dhyaya dhyana etc but these yogis have done a phala sanyasa which means that there is no fruition of a worldly kind so because the fruition of a meritorious action is of the nature of sukha and then we know that because of sukha there is a sukha anushayi raga etc the cycle continues but here the phala sanyasa has been done the fruits have been renounced so and because of that they don't qualify to be called as shukla because they are not going to result in into fruits of the nature of sukha which is the normal punya phala it is not applicable here and therefore tatra ashuklam yogina eva why phala sanyasa okay so we understand why ashukla now why akrishna akrishnam cha anupadanat now the akrishna the akrishna the question itself doesn't arise because the karma that will give krishna phala which is krishna because There, there is a papa parapida involved tormenting others is involved those karmas are ne- never even adopted so there is no question of a krishna karma here and that is why it says anupadanat it is not adopted it is not applicable there is no question there and therefore it is ashukla and akrishna so what about the others itaresham tu bhutanam purvam eva trividam iti as regards the other three it has been already said that those are of the three types which is krishna shukla krishna and shukla for everybody else but for the highest yogi it is ashukla and akrishna so this beautifully fits in in a very clear way with we what we have seen in the bhagavad gita for example there it says tyaktva karma phala sangam nitya trupto nirashrayah कर्मणि अभिप्रवृत्तोपि नैव किञ्चित् करोति सह व्हिच मींस हैविंग रिनाउंस ऑल द कर्म फल संगम द फ्रूट ऑफ द एक्शन इज रिनाउंस द अटैचमेंट टू द फ्रूट ऑफ द एक्शन इज रिनाउंस्ड नित्य तृप्तो फॉर एवर कंटेंटेड निराश्रयः नॉट डिपेंडिंग ऑन एनीथिंग कर्मणि अभिप्रवृत्तोपि इवन दो परफॉर्मिंग एक्शंस नैव किञ्चित् करोति सह इट इज एज़ दो 
he performs no actions at all because it is not it doesn't create any bondage it doesn't create any fruition so similarly so this is the, the one i just mentioned is about giving up the karma phala sangam which means the attachment to the fruit of the action the other type of the renouncement is denouncing the doership the fact that i have done it that aspect if it is removed and it is said all the actions are happening via the prakriti through the grace of the lord and so the doership is given up so there it says yasya naham kruto bhavo buddhir yasya nalipyate hatva api sa iman lokan nahanti na nibadhyate so one who is of has a naham kruto bhavaha means i am not doing i have not done anything here the prakriti acts the grip through the grace of the lord thing happen but i i claim no doership buddhir yasya na lipyate the buddhi is not attached to anything even if he kills hatva sa iman lokan nahanti doesn't kill nani badhyate there is no bondage so very beautifully those points are made in the gita so one has to clearly understand that it is not that the yogi does nothing it is not as often as understood the yogi just sits and meditates that is not the case here the yogi comes to such a caliber that even while engaged in action there is no karma shaya prachaya that is the key point to be understood and for somebody who is on the path one has to understand which is the shukla path the shukla path is the tapaswadhyaya dhyana so those that are more and more internally involved than externally similarly the gita again says kayena manasa buddhya kevale indriya irapi so this is a very clear statement in the gita yogina karma kurvanti sangam tyaktva atma shuddhaye so what is the action of the yogi whether through the body kayena whether through the mind manasa whether through the buddhi or just through the indriyas when the yogi performs karma yoginah when the yogis they perform karma there is no attachment sangam tyaktva they have given up attachment and it is done purely for atma shuddhi for purification of oneself so that same thing that is in the gita here is from a more technical point of view giving the underlying framework patanjali has explained it in terms of the karma jati of the four types and vyasa then to- told us the four types krishna shukla krishna shukla and ashakla krishna and out of these the ashakla and ashakla krishna is a special case that applies only to the highest of the yogis the charama dehi so that is this sutra 4.7 so how do we come at this topic this particular topic will be interesting and also important to be considered the yogi attains gyanasya gyanas swarupa siddhi kriya roopa siddhi which we have seen in third chapter he gets exalted powers to be doing and to be knowing naturally the karma radius would increase somebody is able to do super humanly something super normal ability to do super normal ability to know naturally the karma radius would increase and particularly with reference to what we had considered as nirmana kaya that yogi can simultaneously at one and the same time exist in multiple embodiments like we saw the example of saubhri who became 50 and when he became 50 naturally he had 50 sets of gnanendriyas 50 sets of gna karmendriyas 50 sets of manasendriyas and therefore he, he could be doing 50 fold activities at one and the same time so understand the karma bondage that would be there so with these siddhis particularly such as nirmana kaya the radius would expand the karma radius would expand exponentially unimaginably and then 
we were told that such siddhis can come through so several means. In the first sutra of the Kaivalya Pada, Janma Ushi Mantra, Janma Mantra Ushi Tapa Samadhi are the means. So sutra was Janma Ushi Mantra Tapa Samadhi Ya Siddhaya. And then, Patanjali comes to tell us what is the distinction between all these great superhuman ability bearing people. The yogi stands out. Others, apart from yogi, also can get this expanse of activity radius. But tatra dhyanajam anashayam. The yogi stands out because his siddhis are dhyanaja, dhyana ensuing, dhyana generated, samadhi generated, they are anashaya. So there is no karma vasana. So our karmas create vasanas and the vasanas create again potentials and again tendencies and again karmas, again fruitions. That's how we are caught in the karma chakra. So that is not the case of, say, so very like yogi who got the same siddhi through samadhi. He would become 50, but he won't be multiplying the karmas. Actually, he would be uh, reducing the karmas in enormous space because he is able to do 50 karmas at one and the same time and he would therefore clear the karma balance more easily and substantially. So this Anashaya karma having gotten mentioned Patanjali it becomes imperative to tell us that what are these Class of classes of karmas, and therefore we were told about four classes of karma, as you heard just now: Shukla, Krishna, Shukla Krishna, Ashukla Krishna. So you just heard the description of these definitions of these, and that's how we have come to this sutra and come to this very important topic of types of karmas in particular dimension of it. Now here what we take to note of is, we, th we think some karmas are punya karmas, virtuous karmas. So we say some, per some person is very virtuous person, he doesn't commit vice, but he is all the time in virtues. This is our worldly judgment. And with a worldly laukik judgment, we say somebody is a virtuous person and while somebody is a vicious person. But we are not the auditors of karma to say that somebody is virtuous and somebody vicious. So we say that somebody is a virtuous person. Well, what is this virtuosity? It is according to our assessment that the person is engaged in virtuous karmas. And that they become shukla karmas for us. But that is not true. So shukla karma as you heard just now, that it is performed with, with performed with external means and for the external aspects of life, external world, when you commit virtue for namesake, for you to get name, recognition, etc. That means you are trying to make your virtuous karmas a display objects so that the world knows that you commit virtues. By the, these virtues, the worldly virtues, they are called laukika punya. By laukika punya, there will be either somebody uh, favored or somebody disfavored. Or it would be, as Vyasa puts it, that there will be para pira or para anugraha. So it is reflecting on world outside us. And our Lauki Shukla Karma is always mixed. Because you can't say that if you have disfavored someone by your virtuous act, or if you have vexed and tormented someone by your virtuous act, it is going to recoil as vice, also part of it as a, as a vice. So our Lauki Karma, 
through the external agencies and with external instruments and for the external world for the external purpose can never be genuine authentic origin punya it is not possible to commit punya in laukik plane it will be always tainted and touched when we are using external instruments and apparatuses for our karma and when it is done for external aspects external world some something other than ourselves we are trying to do some favor to others someone else we think that is the virtue that is only laukik virtue but it is always tainted with vice so our laukik karmas are invariably sh- uh, shukla krishna karmas that is a point to be noted here it is not in our assessment that somebody's karmas are virtue or somebody is a virtuous person we are not the assessors we are not the auditors of karma there are others who are auditors of karma which are karma devatas they will audit but we audit and we say somebody is a virtuous person and somebody is a vicious person this is laukik buddhi with laukik buddhi we try to determine this is virtue and this is vice so in the philosophy it has been more clearly described as to what is virtue and what is vice the assessors of karmas are not you and me they are within us called karma devatas so that's the thing to be noted what we think as a virtue or whom we think as a virtuous person in ultimate analysis it won't stand valid there will be some other assessment by which it is decided the point is laukik punya is not punya laukik punya is always tainted touched with some kind of dark aspect krishna aspect as you heard the dark and black aspects so laukik karma karmas are always shukla krishna karma there might be something might be overweighing the other but it is always a combination and then what is shukla karma shukla karma is pure white and this is always done within ourselves it is marasayatta it depends on our own mind see many times our mind is not so good but our deeds are said to be good by by the assessment of the world people around us tell you are doing wonderful work this is wonderful work meritorious work but it doesn't mean that our mind doesn't have any taint or dark spots we very well know that our mind has dark spots but the world doesn't at, at large doesn't understand but they just assess our karma and they say this is a virtuous karma while this shukla karma is totally manasa yatta it is totally depend on one's own mind it doesn't need external instruments assistances or it is not with regards to something which is outside us it is something with regards to inside us so such karmas are only as you just now heard swadhyaya tapas or what we call as adhyatma sadhana this adhyatma sadhana which is done by oneself for oneself with oneself with the help of oneself for oneself so such karmas are concealed to the world outside us these karmas are concealed to people outside us when they are concealed then nobody is really having any anugraha nobody is favored or nobody is tormented because they don't see that you are doing anything because what you do is something very internal it is not visible for others it is not an object for others to see and know that you are doing that's the aspect of authentic yoga sadhana which others will not see what you do inside so if they do not know what is what you are doing inside and they do not know that you are doing something inside how it can be para pida or para anugraha it cannot be happening so there are few karmas such as swadhyaya vedadhyayanam done in one's own mind for one's own mind atma shuddhyartham not laukika praptyartham otherwise we commit virtues for us to be recognized as virtuous person people we want people to 
acknowledge, applaud, and hold us in high esteem. But authentic, genuine adhyatma karma is not like that. It is totally done within. It is totally done through within, for within, in within, by within. So, con totally concealed to world outside us. So, is it possible to do Shuddha Punya Karma by being Laukika plane? Of course, yes. What is that? Veda Dhyanam, Shastra Dhyanam, Chitta Shuddhyartha Karma, Atma Shuddhyartha Karma, Yoga, uh, yoga Sadhana, Paramartha Sadhana, Adhyatma Sadhana, which is done within oneself. So, that is pure Shukla Karma. So, there is a way to perform Shukla Karma even in the Laukik plane. Provided it is only of the nature of tapas, swadhyaya, yoga, adhyatma, paramartha. The Krishna karma is the karma of the wicked people and virtuous people. This is in Lauki Kabuddhi. Those who are engaged in bad deeds, harmful deeds, dangerous deeds, vexing, tormenting deeds, we say he is a vicious person and these are vicious deeds. But a deeper insight, the wiser per person tells us that even if you are dharma chuta, if you have departed from your dharma, your kartavya karma, your nitya karma, that is itself a sin. So if you recall our discuss discussion on the karma during the karma siddhanta, nitya karma was mentioned that it is duty to be performed. It doesn't reap you fo any fruits. It doesn't uh, uh, credit any merits to your accounts. But if you don't do those, then definitely it is at stands debited to your karma, karma account. So not performing those is a sin. So not in the path of dharma, which is uh, given by the shastras, if we are not doing it, not merely not doing it itself is a sin for a microscope endowed wise person. For us, we don't see any sin. So, dharma concept is totally different, and you should recall about nitya karma. We had discussed this performing those you don't score merit, but not performing those you definitely have debit to your account. The, it, 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 the vice gets added. And the best example is said to be the nitya annikam. It is to be performed. If you perform, you may not collect virtue, but you by not performing, you will certainly collect sin. So that's the nature of nitya karma. So the Vedas have mentioned certain karmas as dharma karmas, nitya karmas. So that is Shuddha, that, 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 that is the Shukla Karma and then Swadhyaya and Tapas and Yoga, Paramartha, Adhyatma Sadhana, which is concealed for others. No ray of it goes outside for people to have any assessment of it. So it is possible to be performing Shukla Karmas on this Laukik plane and Ashukla Karmas are not merely sins, but which are sins according to dharma, not sins according to laukika buddhi, people around you. It is according to karma devatas, that is Krishna karma. So we may not be performing sin from laukika buddhi, but having divorce from nitya karma or dharma karma, kartavya karma, there is a sin. Vihita karma, niyata karma, if we are not adhering to those, it is a sin, not for Lopi Kabuti, but for microscopic analysis, they are sins. So that is Krishna Karma. So we are all committing sin because we are all escaping, avoiding, neglecting our Vihita Karma, Niyata Karma, Nitya Karma, our duty and, uh, enjoined by the Vedas, by the Shastras. So these are three kinds of karma. Shukla, Krishna, Shukla, Krishna. And the fourth karma is of the class of yogis. Therefore, there is no karmashaya. And that is Ashukla, Krishna, 
शुक्र कर्म इट इज नाइदर शुक्ल शुक्ला कर्म नॉर कृष्णा कर्म इट इज अ शुक्ल अ कृष्णा कर्म एंड दैट इज ओनली दैट इज द स्किल ऑफ योगी नो वन कैन परफॉर्म इट बट ओनली योगी इज कैन परफॉर्म इट हाउ डू दे डू इट कर्म कर्मे इच्छा त्याग कर्म फल त्याग कर्म फल संन्यास सो दिस इज डिस्क्राइब इन भगवदगीता यू जस्ट नाउ हर फ्रॉम श्री नेट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ संन्यास इट इज नॉट जस्ट वेरिंग ऑरेंज रोब्स इट इज द संन्यस्त वृत्ति नॉट अटैच टू कर्म नॉट अटैच टू फ्रूट्स दे आर ऑफ एंड ऑफरिंग द फ्रूट्स टू ऑल माइटी विच इज ईश्वर वन इधान अकॉर्डिंग टू पतंजलि सो सर्व कर्म फल त्यागम इज द संन्यासम सो दैट इज द कर्म सम काइंड ऑफ कर्म फॉर लौकिक बुद्धि इट माइट बी वाइज आर वर्चू जस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग एक्साम्पल मेनी टाइम्स वी मेक ए बोल्ड स्टेटमेंट सम लाइक सम वन लाइक श्री रामायण रामायण शुड नॉट हैव डन दिस इट वॉज सीन he did, he did it he called, called uh, killed wali he renounced sita this is a sin for us we have laukika buddhi will be looking at a certain thing as sin so also we will say that about saints and yogis we think we don't endorse we say no this is not virtue this is sin this is vice and not a virtue etc etc we have uh, certain says but that is not true just because we call the karma phala sanyasa yogi will be doing all the acts when he is in the on the plane of the world but he would be detached like karma patra ivam bhasa so for us he is doing something so something will be virtue and something will be not virtue something will be vice and something will be not vice but because of his sanyasta vrutti the sanyasa vrutti as bhagavad gita describes and you heard just now padma padma patra ivam bhasa like lotus leaf in water not touched in by water in mire not touched by mire that's how yogi is and that is why his karma is ashukla krishna karma so it is a wonderful topic that is opened out by patanjali which we already had discussed in our discussion on karma siddhanta but anyway it comes here because tatra dhyanajam anashayam so yogi performs a super human karma is even but still there is no why why sir was show it is why because his karma is of ashukla krishna kind and incidentally patanjali describes the three kinds itaresham three type shukla karma krishna karma and the mixed karma and you love on laukik plane we are mostly soaked in mixed kind of karmas it will be always punya will be touched by vice and therefore if they are mixed karmas that is shukla krishna karma trivida itare sham so that's how is an interesting topic okay so from here we go to the next sutra 4.8 they are after telling us about the karmas patanjali now talks about the vasanas he says tatah tad vipaka anugunanam eva abhivyakti va vasananam so from those trivida karma which will lead to fructification which we just saw the three types that lead to fructification in that case the vasanas get manifested and we will see what what is vasana we have heard the term those vasanas get manifested that are in line with so that is anugana so in line with the fruition of the three types of karma the krishna shukla krishna and the shukla the three types with respect to their fruition the corresponding vasanas get manifested that is what the sutra says now so patanjali and vasa here are now again teaching us 
about the karma siddhanta how it operates and all of this the substrate is the chitta so the, the siddhanta is being laid out so tatastad vipaka anugunanam eva abhivyakti vasanaanam so only those vasanas which are in line with the fruition of the uh, three types of karmas only those vasanas of whatever part of the karma she is getting fructified the vasanas that are in line with it are the ones that will uh, get manifested there will be uh, abhivyakti of them so a little bit about the vasana so it is said ye samskaraha smrti hetavah taha vasanaha taascha anadikalina iti so just to give you an idea whenever there is any karma done the karma any action leads to samskaras the samskara is in the chitta all of this is leading to the karmashaya now these karmashaya samskaras they lead to fruition as we have seen in the second chapter the fruition it leads to what was referred to as jati ayu and bhoga and the type of birth which means as what category of creature the birth will happen the life span ayu and the bhoga the life experiences so those are the vipaka the fruition now from the experiences of this from the vipaka anubhava the experiences of the fruition there is something called vasana that gets generated so the normal samskara the karma samskara is generated due to the karma that is performed the vasana samskara or the vasanas are generated from the experiences of the fruition of certain karmas and these vasanas they themselves do not lead to jati ayu bhoga those three are coming from the karma samskaras from the action performed but the vasana leads to the memory of the experiences or the, of the fruition so that is why ye samskara ha smriti hetava ha they are the cause for the memories memory in terms of tendency like dislike so one has a tendency to this is, is to see something as favorable something as non favorable and so on each person has a different kind of a tendency so that is coming from vasana samskara that are generated from having experienced similar things fruition of previous karmas leading to a certain smriti which not be which is that smriti is not exactly memory because memory is referred to as a clear recollection here it is not a clear recollection but from the uh, vasana there is a certain smriti which leads to a certain tendency that is coming from vasanas and those vasanas are anadikalina so they are they are from time immemorial because karmas have always been for, performed and fructified the experience of that fruition of the type of jati ayu bhoga has led to vasanas and that will lead to certain smritis so that is the background around vasanas and this sutra is specifically saying that with all these accumulated vasanas it is not as though randomly any of them will get manifested or all of them will mani- get manifested at the same time etc the manifestation of the vasanas are in line with the karmas that are undergoing fruition so therefore tatah tad vipaka anugunanam eva abhivyakti vasanaanam so that is what the sutra is clarifying so we look at vyasas bhashya vyasas is tatah iti त्रिविधात कर्मणः फ्रॉम दीस थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ कर्म तद् विपाग अनुगुणानाम एव इति व्यास है सो विद रिस्पेक्ट टू और इन लाइन विद देयर फ्रूशन ओनली यद् जातीयस्य कर्मणः यो विपाकः तस्य अनुगुणाया वासनाः कर्म विपाकम अनुशेरे च अनुशेरते तासामेव अभिव्यक्तिः so whatever type of karma is getting fructified so for that fruition for that fruit 
which ever vasanas are in line with them which ever vasanas correspond to them to that type of fruition which has been experienced earlier and therefore led to vasanas so whatever are those corresponding vasanas only those they come into play anusherate and only those get manifested tasameva abhivyakti he rather don't so then he illustrates this is nahi daivam karma vipachyamanam narak tiryak manushya vasana abhivyakti nimittam bhavati so if it is a daivam karma which is a sort of a karma that is getting fructified vipachyamanam means getting fructified undergoing vipaka if that is a daivam karma it is a highly meritorious karma that is leading to a heavenly experience birth life experience of a heavenly kind at that time naraka tiryak manushya vasana abhivyakti hi nimittam na bhavati so at that time the vasanas corresponding to experiences related to naraka naraka means those lokas of suffering or in english refer to as hell uh but here the, the, the naraka there are multiple lokas and so on but in a simplified manner let us say hell like uh, experiences and their corresponding vasanas tiryag means species other than uh human like species or gods etc but species that are animals and creatures or manushya human uh, experiences etc so those vasanas will not come into play the way, abhivyakti nimittam na bhavati but only those related to the daivam the heavenly experiences that are getting fructified all the smriti all the tendencies all the um orientation will come through the vasanas that correspond to that the fruition of the heavenly karmas so na daivam karvam vipachyamanam naraka tiryak manushya vasana abhivyakti nimittam bhavati kintu so those that don't happen then what happens kintu daivanuguna eva asya vasana vyajyante only those vasanas that correspond to that are in line with the daiva karma only those get manifested naraka tiryag manushyeshu chaivam samana charchah so in case of the other so this is even even though the example was given with respect to daiva the heavenly and saying that the others don't get manifested same should be applied for all the other types which means which he means to say that if we are looking at a life span and experience as some kind of a animal creature then the vasana is corresponding to it so if a birth is of as cattle then the vasana related to that fruition the tendency to eat grass etc that gets manifested on its own so this is more of an explanation of how the vasana operates with respect to because the karma subject has been touched in the previous sutra in terms of krishna shukla etc so then the vasanas for those karmas that get fructified those three types how the vasana operates also has been clearly mentioned here so why is this brought about so in another text it is sort of clarified it says tasmad वासना अभिव्यक्तेर्नयत्यात् नयत्यात् न अयोगिनां तत्त्वज्ञानं विना मोक्षाशंका गन्धोपि इति दिक् देयरफॉर बिकॉज़ देयर इज ऑलवेज दिस वासना फ्रक्टिफिकेशन व्हिच ऑलवेज हैपेंस देयरफॉर देयर इज नो चांस गन्धोपि सो लाइक वन सेस forget getting the thing even the smell of the thing will not be available so therefore yes if somebody is not a yogi someone does not have the tattva gnanam then there is no, no chance of moksha it says so unless because of the operation of the vasanas so unless the karma shaya really gets purified by yogic actions because of the way the chitta the karma shaya and the vasanas operate the there is no chance of moksha and therefore the this path of yoga the purification the grace of the ishvara etc all of that is the only path to moksha and this the, the text from where i quoted it is that is why this sutra and this bhashya has been introduced to make that perfectly clear so that is sutra 4.8
so how do we come here because we just now heard the yogis karmas are anashaya that means there is no fructification of karmas committed by yogis but then what is the case of others there is always fructification karmas committed by non yogis we common people mortal people when we commit karmas there are karma phalas invariably uh, they are st- stuck to the very karma so how does the karma phala ka 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 me kar come about it's not that we do a karma and then is a fruit and for it like a tree bears the fruit our karmas bear a fruit see we have uh, enormous stack stock of karmas and part of it is fructifying as destiny prarabdha all our karmas don't fructify all the karmas that we have done from time without beginning are not fructifying in this life there are only few karmas which are good, uh, uh, allocated as prarabdha karma they are going to fructify there are so many unfructifying karmas which will be in a cold storage of karmas so they will fructify whenever the time is ripe so there is always a time for fruition we have seen the uh, the classification of karma sopakrama nirupakrama we should recall while we are dealing with the karma siddhanta and uh, some karmas quickly fructify some do not say if you try to do plantation of grass we will get the grass within one or two days it doesn't take long time for grass to appear in the ground but if you have planted a coconut tree sometimes it can take 40 years to bear off bear out a coconut so some coconut trees bear out coconut in 10 years some in 20 years 30 40 50 years or more years so the gestation period concept is there so similarly certain karmas will fructify uh now here in this life they are called prarabdha karmas there are some karmas which are in our karma account they are not going to fructify in this karma in life this lifetime but then because that's a longer gestation period it will be taking pre, uh, fructifying at a later point in time which will be beyond our present life span the point is when when there is a karma ashaya there is karma vasana and there is a fructification which is attached to it invariably with, without exception that's why patanjali says with what what about the ashaya yukta karmas our karmas are ashaya yukta and yogi's karmas are ashaya vinirmukta so when there is this ashaya yukta karma are there which are trividam tatah tad vipaka anugunanam eva abhyaktir vasana nam so you just now heard that all karmas create samskars and those samskars which are going to be fructifying then the vasana sprout comes on it and these vasanas correspond to the fruit that is going to be born in this life so karma anuguna vasana comes up it is not karma and karma phala there is karma and there is karma anuguna vasana and then there is karma phala according to karma siddhanta so the vasana will come up to for the sake of fructification with the vasanas we do karmas having committed karmas whenever the fructification time comes up again we will have corresponding vasanas whereby the fruit will be born and fruit will be experienced so therefore in case of our karmas which are going to bear out fruit tataha tad vipaka anuguna corresponding to fruition the vasana will surface the vasana will surface and motivate us to do and that activity will give up fruits so karma is not just action karma is a unique concept you should recall when we discussed the karma phala is also karma and that's why when it, we are 
used to say, when we are facing consequences, oh, we say, this is my karma. The fruition. We are referring to fruition. So karma is activity as well as fruition. That is how the concept karma is. And it's a technical term. Karma cannot be rendered into English and that would be just action. It's not just action. The fruit is also karma. So, commensurate with the fruition, the vasanas will surface. Corresponding to fruition, vasanas will surface. So he gives the example, if the daiva karma is going to be fructifying, other vasanas will be kept at bay. Like Manusha vasana, Tairiya vasana, these won't be surfacing or you to experience celestial hood, celestial ship. So daiva karma vipachamanam, when it is going to be fructifying, Tairiya Manusha vasana vipachamanam, when it is going to Na sambhavati. And therefore, we are able to experience. So today we are able to experience our life as human being life. But we have karmas to be of any other class such as ant, mosquito, fly, fish, whale, cattle, animal, beast, uh, creature, etc. But they are not surfacing now. They don't surface. Only our human vasanas will surface and therefore we are human manifestation. It doesn't mean we don't have ant manifestation vasana or elephant manifestation vasana. It is there. But it is not going to appear. It will be kept in cold storage. So karma, the phala, phala anuguna vasanas come up and therefore we experience phala. We don't experience phala because of our only karma. Karmas create samskars and the samskars go into the samskar cortex. Whatever fructification or fruits have to come up, corresponding karma will be picked up and there will be vasana of such karmas and therefore we will get the fruit. So this is the karma siddhanta if you recall which was discussed earlier. So the point is karma anuguna vasana abhivyakti. If you are going to have a um, fruit of say punya karma, the, pun the punya will not just come. You will do something whereby you will get punya pala by way of success, by way, way of delight, by way of accomplishment, happiness, accomplishment. That is the karma pala of a punya karma. We feel happy. Karma Siddhanta told us. Relationship between punya and sukham, papam and dukham. So, if the punya karma is going to bear out sukham, we will do karmas which will give us sukha. Sukha will come by way of our successful endeavor, uh, delight giving endeavor, accomplishment giving endeavor. So, that's how anuguna vasanas will be there and we will commit certain karmas whereby the fruit will come. The fruit doesn't fall in our mouth just like that. Like if you see, uh, lie down under a tree and your mouth is open and the fruit uh, happens to fall, it can fall in your mouth straight away. Karma palas don't come like that. Like that. We will do anuguna karmas. For anuguna karmas, anuguna vasanas will appear. And that's how we will get punya karma phala. So for punya karma phala, we will have to do some punya karma in just before experiencing punya as well. So that is what is to be cited in the Siddhanta, which is coming in the Sutra. Okay. Okay. So with this, um, let us stop for today. Recite the shlokas and Guruji and end the session. Vajnanikam pravaktritva asaneshu kala vidam yoga abhyase cha tattvagnyam Vandeham 
सुंदरम गुरुम योग वृक्षो हि लोकेस्मिन यत्प्रेरणेन वर्धितः योगाचार्य गुरो तुभ्यं सुंदराय नमो नमः थैंक यू नमस्कार ऑल ऑफ यू